Hi, I'm Dave from Calvary Church Ballinar. Thank you for joining me for this week's reflection on Gentle and Lowly, which is about the heart of Christ for sinners and sufferers, people like you and like me. And in chapter 13 and 14, the author wants us to see that both the Holy Spirit and God the Father are not somehow different in their heart towards us. It's not that the picture of Jesus is unique to him alone, but rather as we meet Jesus, as we see what he is like, we're shown exactly what God the Father and God the Spirit are like as well. They share in his love for us in every single way. So let's first look at the Holy Spirit. He is the one who Jesus promised would come after he left. And the author points out some of the different roles that the Holy Spirit has in the life of those who belong to Jesus, those who are Christians. The Holy Spirit leads us, guides us, guides us towards all truth, um, transforms us to be more like Jesus and makes us fruitful. We, we read of the fruit of the Spirit and all the changes that the Holy Spirit brings in us. But the author wants to focus on one particular role of the Holy Spirit in this chapter. And that is this, that the Spirit causes us to actually feel Christ's heart for us. I'll say that again. The Holy Spirit, he has an important role, a vital role in causing us to feel Christ's heart for us. Um, so the author says this, the Spirit makes the heart of Christ real to us, not just heard, but seen, not just seen, but felt, not just felt, but enjoyed. The Spirit takes what we read in the Bible and believe on paper about Jesus's heart, and he moves it from being mere theory to reality, from being doctrine to experience. Now, if I talked about my wife, Brooke, I could tell you lots of things I know about her and what what an amazing person she is, how, how far out of my league I really am. But it wouldn't be enough to just tell you the things I knew about her, nor would it even be enough to say that when we got married, that she promised to love me. And so I'm pretty sure she loves me. Part of our relationship is that I feel and know that love, not just in my mind, but I experience it and I feel it in my heart. That is so key in the health of our relationship. I would hope that's true of any marriage, that it's not just head knowledge, it's not just something we believe about our spouse, but we feel their love, we experience it. It becomes not just known or seen, but felt and enjoyed. And that is what the Holy Spirit does as we consider Christ, the one who is gentle and lowly of heart towards sinners and sufferers like us. He helps us experience and feel Christ's love. When Jesus is speaking in John chapters 14 through to 16 about him sending the Holy Spirit after he goes, uh, the disciples, you can imagine the sorrow they felt. They feel like this friend, this savior, this king, this Lord that they've got to know is, is being taken from them. And you can imagine the grief and Jesus can sympathize with that grief, but he tells them good news that even though he is going, he is sending the spirit whom he calls the helper. In John chapter 16, Jesus says this, verse five to seven, but now I am going to him who sent me and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. Jesus sees that it is of great advantage to his followers that the Holy Spirit comes and takes all those things that are true of the heart of Christ and internalizes them, personalizes them, brings them into each and every believer's experience. And so the author asks the question, in what way is the spirit a superior comforter to God's people? He shall tell you, if you will listen to him and not grieve him, nothing but stories of Christ's love. The spirit keeps reminding us of the heart of Christ, that we would experience it and know it and feel it at our very core, that it will be something that is utterly real and experienced in every day of our lives. 
And so if that doesn't describe your relationship with Christ and his spirit, if you know about Jesus in your mind, you know things about him, information about him, and even if you believe those things and yet you've never experienced and felt that love, let me encourage you. The best way to do that is to have God's word open and to pray to him and to read and to get to know him and to ask that his spirit would fill you as you do that. We'd love to be part of encouraging you in that regard. So if you'd like our help, get in touch. We'd love to be able to read the Bible with you and pray with you. Thanks for listening. Next week, we'll look at chapter 14, which is on how the Father also has this same gentleness and lowliness that Christ demonstrates in his attitude towards us. I'll see you then. Thanks.